we are now. A couple minutes early. Here we are. A couple minutes early today. Today's show, The Art Ooh. of Minimalism, How to Declutter and De-Stuff Your Life. Yeah, that's what it's all about today. In five simple steps. I gotta go check the camera. Yes. Why? Keep, because because <laughs> I'm gonna entertain. I'm gonna I, I think that the thing was the thing the was thing. covering the thing. All right. There we go. Right I right. doubt it, but whatevs. Yeah, I wonder if we could, uh, you know, get the monitor on and you know when we start. Steven was here with us. When, there is because I saw somebody. Oh but yeah. There is. Um, when we start a few minutes early just for the fun of it, because we were just ready to go. We just were, we were, we were set. Apparently I wasn't quite ready yet. It's all good. We are a little early. We're even early for our own pre-show. But I want to remind everybody, the art of minimalism, how to declutter and de-stuff your life in five simple steps. And I should say, this is actually part one of two. Yeah. Because tomorrow, which is fucked up Friday, hashtag F-U-F, we are going to go down to the bowels of our closet. That makes it sound like our closet's like a dungeon. <laughs> the bowels refreshing. of our bedroom. We're going to film live, Brian and Carrie in the morning, tomorrow morning, from our bedroom and closet. You're going to watch us pack a single suitcase. And yes, it's yes, going to be my suitcase. That's right. Because no one believed you. Nobody believes yes. me. And the conversation has kept going. Right? I'm going, good morning, everybody. Lisa, Mama Lisa, drops. Karen, Sarah. Hi, Sarah Elizabeth, Michelle yes. Lee, Michelle Adams, Brian Sackwood, Cecily Casey. Hey, hey, hey. Sack of brains. Look at you guys. You know. Yes. Welcome to Brian and Karen. What was that? It was, that was a, I have something to say. Okay. I, I just, well, there we go. I there just we wanted are. to say that um, I, uh, for whatever reason this morning when I woke up, I had like the hardest time waking up. Like yes. I was like, I, I think I walked upstairs like this. Uh, yeah. You know, we were both dragging ass. Yeah, you woke up an hour earlier than four forty. I got um, out of bed this morning. It was a little early. For he me. like jumped out of bed. And yeah. he was very alert. But um, I was like, a, like I was really having a hard time waking up this pee. morning. But like twenty minutes later into that, I, I woke up and now I yeah. just got energy. <laughs> She's been on fire, a little bunny. Yeah, Why a, bunny? I, a bunny. Oh, <laughs> I didn't say you had to be a bunny. I was. Just like, I, I was I was asking why we use the metaphor of bunnies when like, someone's energized. Because I think bunnies are very, like, they, they, they just... <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. I actually, I've had two pet bunnies in my life. And they both, they fucking just sit there. <laughs> they sit there. They're cute as hell. You rub their little faces. You watch them eat parsley every day because it's awesome. And then they eat their own poo. That's a little known fact, but it's true. <laughs> Fucking, you love telling that part of the story. Because a bunny turds about 75,000 times a day. And then every once in a while, after they finish turding, if you ever seen bunny poop, it's hard little pellets. You can use it like a BB gun or in a BB gun. They sit up on their hind legs and start eating the turd. You know. Anyways, the point of the story <laughs> is that bunnies are actually kind of docile. They're kind of relaxed and chill. They procreate like crazy. That's why. They do. That's Good morning. What Cecily say. Could you do me a favor? Connie, hello. If you are watching right now and you have not chimed in and said good morning, yeah. can you make my day an extra special day? Right. And just like chime in and say, hey, Carrie, because I want to greet the people who, who yeah. haven't chimed in yet. I agree. I also want to say that uh, uh, Brian Bag of Brains is sitting in his jammies. He's on March break this week. Nice. Take a picture of that, son. He's on March break. I want to see that. He's been traveling around some as well. Yes. Bunnies are very good at avoiding being hit by cars. I agree. I agree. Karen, it's true. It's tough to nail down. I've tried. I've never tried. I've had two pet bunnies. I love them. Hi, just, Mona. You just do this. And that's what they do. They you, rub you their... just do that. They rub their little <laughs> cheeks towards your... It's so cute. I see. This is what I'm talking about. Yes. Good morning, Jim Kerr. Good morning, Elsa, who now, I didn't even know hi. was chiming in. Elsa, and where are you in the world, Elsa? And I want to know, Jim Kerr, exactly why my name is in brackets. Because I said, say good morning, Carrie, and he was just chiming in saying oh, Carrie as well. I was just curious. It wasn't like a thing. Wesley Thompson, who went to LRHS with me, good morning. You went to high school with Carrie Campbell. Yes. I, I think Wesley was a couple years older than me. Um, Elsa is in... Good um, morning. I worked with Elsa, and I can't remember... I hate it when I can't remember this. She's in a Scandinavian co country. Am I right on, on that, Elsa? You're in, are you in Norway? Oh, I hate it when I do this. I don't think that's right. <laughs> 
She, well, I'm going to say good morning to Eliza and Louise. Good morning. You see, Eliza. everybody played my game. Who else is out there? Who if else? Because there's lots of people watching, like tons of people watching who haven't said hi yet. Good morning, Anne, Tiffany. I yeah. love our crew. Because I'm happy. Where are my crew at? Crew. Crew. I just love my crew. <laughs> Um, Cause I'm having a good day, and I want to know. I want to share my good day with you. Right, absolutely. You know? I think our Darcy, Darcy down there in Chicago, that. near the windy, near the windy city. Darcy, where are you again? You're not in Chicago. You're outside Chicago. I lived in Schaumburg for a long time, Barrington for a long time. I lived in Crystal Lake for a little bit of time. We have quite a bit of uh, quite a few of crew members in. Um, Chicago, in the yes. Chicago area, Steve Montfinesse and yes. Cecily Casey as well. Uh, 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 Michael Hetke. That's right. Yeah, good I morning. Michael was from Chicago. Yes, he is. He's in, the, he's in the, I believe, Bolingbroke. Good morning, uh, Papa Draps, Lynette. I'm Elisa. I get it. Eliza. I'm Elisa. Elisa. Yeah, yeah, see? <laughs> but I, I like to say Eliza. Eliza's, Elisa's funny. Eliza. It is Eliza, though. It's, that's how it's Oh, been, Mich I believe it was. Michelle, your phone died. But you're back. Good morning, Christine Basista. Today's show, by the way, The Art of Minimalism, How to Declutter and de-stuff your life in five simple steps. This topic was selected today because on Tuesday when we were going to do something else. Completely different. Y'all started asking us questions that were awesome. So we went down a very different road and the whole four suitcase life started. You guys started chirping at us with questions, which we loved. So we decided to do this show today and tomorrow what we're going to do is film Brian and Carrie in the morning on Fucked Up Friday. Hashtag F-U-F. We're going to film it live from our bedroom. Mm -hmm. You're going to watch Carrie Campbell pack her one and only suitcase in the entire world. And it's going to happen. People. Yeah, of course it is. That's how we moved here. But he believes me. I believe you. You know, we just like kind of flow with it, don't we? Because right? we had a completely different week planned out like Brian said. We did. <laughs> but you guys were so inquisitive and you wanted to know so much. So we're like, you know what? Let's you just, set us straight. Let's I love just that. flow with it. Aurora. Tiffany says there's a Crystal Lake in Connecticut. Pretty cool. Uh, Darcy is from Aurora, Illinois. First of all, I've been to Aurora many times. I used to coach as a, straight, as a performance I, coach. I recognize the name as for, well. For uh, figure skaters in that right. area. Uh, Bolingbroke, Aurora, Naperville, um, 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 Glen Allen. Uh, Aurora is also famous because of the movie Wayne's World. Oh, I don't think Where I Mike know. Myers, who's actually from Toronto, where I'm from, his character was from Aurora, Illinois. I don't think I knew It's that. a nice town. I've never been. Good, solid people in Aurora. You know what's a nice town? Darcy, good, solid people in Aurora. In Chicago. And there's a Chipotle. Oh my God, we love Chipotle. Yes. Um, she grew up in Palatine. Mm. I know where that is. I know where Palatine is. Palatine's right beside Schaumburg, yeah. where I used to live. You know where uh, I, I used to live? Darcy, I lived uh, like at uh, uh, um, Algonquin and Meacham. Can you picture that? Algonquin and Meacham. You know, Darcy, can uh, you picture that? Good morning, Heath Herrera. Hey, good morning, Heath. Welcome to the show. I am not sure if this is the first time you've chimed in or you're just you're doing as I asked and saying hi. But good morning. Where are you from in the world, Heath? Uh, we miss you too, uh, 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 well, Christine. Park, we know that too. Highland Park. Cecily, you're in Highland Park. That's where um, Alicia Florick lives. The good in life. The good life. Yes. <laughs> or used to live, right? Darcy, I lived right down the street from Woodfield Mall. Look you at are 100% right. this whole like, little thing going yes. on here. Yes. You know, I just want to say. Oh, Christine's moving to Golden, Colorado. 40 days. The nice. countdown is off. Nice. Um, I love Chicago. I love visiting. I loved um, yeah. when I used to visit you in Chicago. Great Bri time. Brian moved to Montreal, but then he had to go back to Chicago for a period of like three and a half months for immigration yes. stuff. It was it was nightmarish. It was horrible. Um, but I used to love coming to visit you. I have such fond memories of uh, driving around. Me too. Yeah. I, Palatine. Palatine. And for those of you who don't know, it's called Des Plaines. It's not Des Plaines, Chicago. Des Plaines. I, 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 oh, not Chicago, but... Uh, well, Illinois. near Chicago, Des Plaines. Yeah. Des, Des Plaines. It's not Des Plaines. It's Des Plaines. No. <laughs> Where are my Chicago and Cecily Darcy? It's displays. So, we go there a lot to the mall still, right? We probably bumped into each other years ago. Brian bought me, bought me my very first present from him at that mall. It I was did. a hat. Which you will knock it in, Which by the way. Which was so hard for me to buy and yeah. allow you to do. Because right, that's not your way. But we're starting in two minutes. Two Let minutes. me just say this. The art of minimalism, how to declutter and de-stuff your life in five simple steps. This is part one. Part two is tomorrow. We're going to film... Brian and Carrie live from our bedroom and watch Carrie Campbell pack her one and only suitcase in the entire world, which is a kind of perfect fucked up Friday topic, I think. I'm going to be like a little bunny. 
Yes. I'm going to like just, because maybe, yes. you know what would be fun to do is, can we time it as well? To, to, yeah, we can do that. Why like, not, right? Let's like put it on a timer because. See? Darcy says I'm right. It's Desplaines. Well, unless you're French. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not Desplaines at all. Can I tell that story really quickly? Desplaines. So, so, you know, I grew up in French Canada, which means I tend to, um, I tend to process things in French if they look French. Yeah. Right? And so, well, like... They are French. Well, they are French. Desplans is French, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. So, Ryan and I were driving down the street the very first time I visited him in Chicago, and he's like, yeah, so this is Desplans. And I'm like, this is what? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it's called Desplans. And he goes, no, it's not. It's Desplans. It's Desplans. And I was like, do people... I was like, I was like, 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 I'm just curious. Like, people know that that's not exactly... Like, that's not how you say it? Some of them know. And I think it, Cecily knows. And Darcy it really, knows. Yeah, it means the planes. Right, but not everybody knows. Can I tell... You know, we're going to get started in one minute, but I want to say this one little thing first, okay? Does anybody watching right now know... Type it into the comments. How do you say Santa Claus in French? Okay, I want, because I grew up in Canada as well. I didn't grow up in French Canada, but I grew up in Canada, which means you learn French as a second language. Wesley so, Thompson knows. Right, so I'm, I'm familiar enough with French to know how to say certain things, like, you know, Santa Claus. Anybody want to wager a guess? How you say Santa, and if you know it, if you are French or from French Canada, type it in there so we all see it. How do you say Santa Claus in en French. Français? En Français. I say Santa <laughs> How come no one's chiming in? Père Noël. Noel. Good oh, job, yeah. Louise. I Kay. love that every Quebecer just chimed in. <laughs> right? Okay, so Santa Claus in, in, in French is Père Noël. Okay? Now, I had a friend in Chicago. Her name was Noel. And she said to me one time, I said, you know what's so cool? I grew up in Canada. Noel is a French name. And since I moved to Chicago, I'm not used to seeing French things or French names. It's kind of cool. Your name is French. Did you know your name was French? She goes, yeah, it means claws. <laughs> and I said, what? She goes, yeah, like, uh, the way you say uh, uh, Santa Claus in French is Père Noël. Santa Claus, Père Noël. So Noël means claws. And I said, no, um, sweetheart. <laughs> Père Noël in English is Father Christmas. Noël actually means Christmas. Your name is actually Christmas. Absolutely. You know, she didn't know that, though. And Wesley Thompson just made a great comment, because it's also true in Quebec. We also refer to Père Noël as uh, Saint-Nicolas. Really? Yeah, it, it's it's. It, I I've never heard of that. Yeah, Saint Nicholas makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, and Cecily, who's from Chicago, says, "Oh my God," as if like, really? How could you be that dumb? It's true. <laughs> the number of like stories. you don't have to. You you can't have a name Noel your entire life and think it means claws. You know. Can well, I, you, you can because she did, but really, come can, on. You know, I, I I know we're gonna get we're gonna get to the topic, but I just want to say we have got some of these like really funny stories that are like bridges between Canada and the states, where people like from the states think one thing about Canada, or yes. Canada think one thing about states, and we're gonna tell those stories one day because they're right? the most ridiculous stories. You know that what? you're like, how do people not know this? You're absolutely. Right. I'm gonna tell one right now. As I kick us off, welcome to Brian and Carrie in the Good morning. morning. Welcome. We are live five mornings a week, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9.50 a.m. is when our pre-show starts. That's when all the fun happens. Today's topic is the art of minimalism, how to declutter and de-stuff your life in five simple steps. We are coming at you live from the gorgeous, look over my shoulder, Mount Tremblant, Quebec here in Canada, where we speak both French and English. I'm we just saying... Most of us do. And if you know already, and you do, that this topic, me and Carrie, are going to earn a share from you, please do us a favor. Do yourself a favor. Do the world a favor. <laughs> share this right now. Okay, now, I'm going to ask you guys a question about minimalism, okay? And I want you to answer it with comments while I tell a story. Here's the question. Would you like to have less, uh, less stuff in your life? Would you like to have less, uh, less shit, less crap? Less, less clutter. Less clutter. Would you enjoy that? If so, I want to know. And I also want to know why. Mm. So you type out your answer while I'm telling the story. I moved to Montreal in 2010. Brought my car with me from Chicago. Bought it in Chicago. Had Illinois plates. American. All that stuff. Drove it here because I wanted to keep it. So, got here. A couple weeks later, realized I had to get new car insurance. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I called my old insurance company that was insuring my car in Chicago, and I said, hey, I've moved to Montreal, Canada, mm -hmm. and I need new car insurance. Do you guys have some kind of international insurance I could purchase that covers this car 
while I'm in Canada. And the, the receptionist said to me, I shit you not, sir, I'm so sorry, but we don't cover car insurance overseas. <laughs> to which I said, you know, that's okay. Because um, there is absolutely no sea <laughs> that separates America from Canada. So we're going to be okay. Oh, it's going to be okay. You know what she said to me? What do you mean? <laughs> what the fuck do I mean? You grew oh. up in Chicago and you didn't know there wasn't an ocean between you and Canada? You honestly didn't know there wasn't a massive body of water that separated you from Canada. I drove my car from where you are to where I am, and you think I somehow paddled it? Across a fucking ocean? What do I mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? <laughs> Fuck! Anyways, that's what I gotta say about that. Well, I just wanna say, while you were telling that story, yes. I was reading the comments, and yes, Woo. everybody wants to know how to get rid of stuff. They have too much stuff. They can't find anything. It frustrates yes. you. It weighs you down. What I was doing just before the show answered all those things as well. Yes. Um, we're really excited about this oh, because... Good stuff. Um, yeah, I knew about that Connie's as well. moving to a tiny house. Great. Yeah. Love. And Cecily, of course. They're, they're very sophisticated, intelligent people <laughs> in Chicago. I'm not casting a generalization. Hey, we have them up here in Canada. We too. have some pretty dumbass people all over the world in general, don't we? But that tops my list of stupid. The July 4th one was... Should I tell it? Let me tell it. Because I'm going to tell this you. This is a true fucking so, story. So Brian, I, I can't remember all the details, and it doesn't matter right now, but the long story short was that someone um, from the States, when Brian moved to, to the States, yep. asked him, you know, if he was going home for July 4th or something like that. Like, you know, back to Canada to celebrate July 4th. Yeah. To which Brian said... Well, we don't celebrate July 4th in Canada. And the person was like aghast. aghast. And Brian was like, well, you know, no, we don't celebrate America's Independence Day in Canada. I, I had to lean in just a little bit. I can't, this is what I said to her. I can't wait to celebrate my very first, uh, first 4th of July. That was right. That was it. And she said, oh, you guys don't celebrate the 4th of July in Canada? Do we celebrate the 4th of fucking July? Why the well, fuck we do we... It's Maya's birthday. Why would we celebrate the 4th of fucking July in Canada? Canada didn't declare... Really? Oh, That's a question? Anyways, Let's... I'm loving all the smiles. Everybody is like, is totally down for this. A yes. cluttered house equals a clutter, cluttered brain. Yeah, I agree with Ruth. Uh, Ruth, Ruth. We're both <laughs> fucked. Is it fucked up Friday? Speak for, you know, fucked well, up Friday I, has been making its way into Thursday. But let's, let's do it. Let's I, get I to love, uh, I, re I love Ruth's comment. I had a trouble with that statement too. A cluttered house equals cluttered brain. I had trouble saying Ruth. Oh. Fuck. Anyways, <laughs> guys, here's what I want to say first. Okay, number one, I don't think you might, well, you might not realize how much spiritual, mental, and emotional dis-ease you have related to your stuff. Yeah. I don't think you realize that. I don't think most people realize that. I don't think most people realize how materialistic our world is. Mm -hmm. Even if we claim not to be materialistic. Right. I mean that sincerely. And we're not indicting you. We're not saying you're doing something wrong. We we had our own eyes opened mm -hmm. about seven years ago. We lived in a two-story five-bedroom house on an acre of land. We didn't even go into two of the rooms Probably. ever. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, since I moved into that house, I'm not sure I walked into them. Yeah. And yet those two rooms were full yeah. of things. Knickknacks, yeah. paddy wax. Years and years of accumulated stuff. Do you know how many uh, uh, sets of uh, uh, dinner plates we had? Four. Four! <laughs> what, in case 16 people come over for dinner one night? Right. There's four people that live in our house. We have 16 dinner plates, 16 saucers, 16... Coffee cups yeah, and four sets of silverware. You know what? I want to actually... That's a lot of fucking forks. I want to actually add to that because it wasn't actually 16 set d dishes, 16 plates. We had two full sets, which meant we had two sets of 24 plates. That's 48 plates that we had. So in case 44 people surprise <laughs> us for dinner, right? So, okay. So dinnerware and silverware is not your thing, right? How many, how many t-shirts do you have? How many pairs of jeans? How many pairs of jeans? How many shoes? 
How many hair products do you have sitting in your pro your thing? How many body lotions? You know what, what catches me is when I go to a friend's house, and this happened to us like two years ago. We were like, oh my God, are you serious? So, you know, like uh, uh, hand soap dispensers at a kitchen sink? Mm. It was full. It was full. It was all the way fucking full. And our friend accidentally, while she was doing the dishes, dropped it on the floor. It was a plastic bottle. It cracked. It was full. She picked it up, threw it in the garbage, and then walked over to the pantry, opened the door, to which we saw six more bottles of hand soap, just like it. So, like, we were we had our eyes open seven years ago. We didn't. Oh, we're not materialistic people. We don't we don't hoard. We're not. Look at that show, hoarders. We're not like them. But there is more stuff and clutter and shit than you think there is. Mm. Hey, can I ask you guys one quick question? Did you ever notice that what I wear up top is almost, I mean, you can almost count the days by it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that? I, I actually want to know if anyone has ever noticed that the t-shirts or shirts that I wear, kind of, you see them on a regular basis. I, I'd love to know. Cecily Casey, you were right, by the way, about that one. She does shop at Costco. She does, yes. About, Absolutely. But yeah. But the whole t-shirt thing, do you want to know why you see the same t-shirts in me forever? Because I have five. Mm -hmm. I have five t-shirts, that's why. I don't need 18. I used to have 29. Yeah. So, are, know, we, are we making a point? Can I make a point about yes. that, actually? Because we're going to get more into this, right? Of course, and you have five steps. Guys, as we're asking the... Um, they're the kind of what seems like rhetorical questions. Answer them. Like, how many dinner plates do you have? We want to know, like, your answers, right? Before you go uh, on, I just want to say, sorry. Look, perception is everything. Brian Sackwood says, yes, you wear the one with the skull a lot. Mm -hmm. The next comment, Lisa Arsenal says, yes, especially the Superman one. Hey, guys, I have five T-shirts. I wear them all once a week. Mm -hmm. So isn't that an amazing example of perspective? Right. Lisa sees the Superman one all the time. Yeah. Brian sees the skull one all the time. Mm -hmm. I wear one a week. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. That's all. You know, I want to I want to chime in on this particular point before we keep going because I I think that um, I I think that this is actually really important. So Brian just talked to you about his closet. He has yeah. five T-shirts, right? I do not. Um, and and I think that that is the pr like all of my stuff fits in one suitcase, one big suitcase. All his stuff fits in one small suitcase, yeah. right? But I think that this is a, I mean we talk about this with everything that we talk about. It's about making it your own, right? So like just because Brian has it one way and I have it one way doesn't mean they they have to be the same or that they're right or wrong. You have to find the way that's right for you, right? Like yeah. what does minimizing mean to right. you? Right. Not I have to do it. Oh, Carrie and Brian have only five T-shirts, so now I and like Precisely. someone made the comment this. this this morning, actually, we posted what we were talking about today and someone said, yeah, you know, I, I really want to do that with my closet, but I work out of the house and I have to have, you know, suit, um, suit clothes and stuff like that. The point is, is we're not telling you to go and replicate exactly, exactly yeah. what we did. We're telling you to look at everything yeah. and make it your own, the, right? The five simple steps we have today are exactly that. They're concepts that you take from us and you make your own. Right. To answer Cecily, um... What she say here? She goes, what, oh, pardon me, Darcy, what you wear on the other two days? Well, the cleaning lady comes every Friday. She launders my stuff. By Saturday morning, it's all clean again. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Um, no, I have a Batman one as well. <laughs> I love how much my t-shirts are getting played right now. This is awesome. Okay. So, you get the point. By yes. the way, have we earned it yet? If not, give us a share. Yeah, give us a share now. Give us a share. We're about to get into the five steps. This is the five steps. This is the give us a share territory. Okay, by the way, good morning, Jessica. So here are your five steps. You ready? We're going to give them to you all at once and then break them down one at a time. You ready? One toy in, one toy out. Two-year plan. Establish your guidelines. Be solution-centric. Uh, solution and attachments aren't real. Those are the five steps. Now, let's break them down. One toy in... One toy out. That's number one. Yeah. I'm going to frame how we came to this idea. Yeah, and sure. And then you kind of take it away. Of course. So here's where it was. Do you guys have kids? If you have kids or you had young kids when they're, you know, when they're younger, obviously, everybody knows this. I forgot that this is where it came from. Yeah. I remember this morning. That's so right? funny. It's been around for so long. So you walk into, near, or within 65 miles of a toy store. And your kids can smell it. And then they want all the toys. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, look, it. I think that materialism in large part is conditioned when we're very young. 
I think we're all much more materialistic than we think we are. We were. Uh, I also think that as parents, we're leaders. Our kids watch us more than they talk. They see us buying six bottles of hand soap, as an example. Okay? So your kids want all the toys. And it wasn't a stressful situation. It wasn't like a fight. But we, we wanted to start teaching our kids, conditioning them at a young age to not be materialistic. Yeah. Right? So we combined what we thought were two great worlds. We say, you know what? If we buy you a toy, you have to select a toy you already have that's basically of equal value or mm -hmm. something like that, and we have to donate it. Yeah. You have to walk your own candy ass over to the Goodwill. I'll come with you. Yeah. Or you have to go to the church, or you have to choose a neighbor who has you know less than we have, and you have to go in and say, I, I'd like to give this to a child who, who needs it more than me. Mm -hmm. That was the rule. One toy in means one toy comes out. Yeah. And that is what we taught our kids. Now, I just want to finish the story by saying, to this day, for suitcase life, we have a daughter and a son. They're both teenagers, or almost teenagers. They have a suitcase also. Mm -hmm. You want to walk into two kids' rooms who are not messy, they have no junk drawers, there's no clutter, there's no unnecessary clothes piles, they have exactly the same kind of stuff that we have. Yeah. They are minimalists also, by now, choice. Mm -hmm. By now, there is a choice for them. Yeah. So it's carried with them their entire lives yeah. thus far. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I want to add to the whole story of the. First of all, can you chime in if you can re if you like if you like the idea of the one toy in one toy out? Yeah. I want to hear what you have to say. Let's hear you on that. But um, I, I, you know, I love that you brought that up from the point of where it was created because I totally forgot about it. Yeah. And I just want to add to it because it's not like anybody who has kids means there is probably grandparents around. And let's face it, grandparents often come with toys. Right. Like, have you, do you guys experience this when your kids were little that your mom or your dad came to visit and they had a bag of gifts to give to your child with another stuffed animal or whatever like that, right? right. Like, so that was another part of the process of why we adopted it. We actually started to talk to my parents about it as well and yes. they adopted the, the principles with us. Yep. But I also got the visual of when, <laughs> when Chase was a little boy, mm -hmm. he used to have this toy bin, right? So he had this one toy bin. And like, I hate this fucking thing. You could like hear him every morning, like looking for something, you'd be like, <laughs> looking for something. Like we all know, kids have their stuff in a toy bin, they right. never use them. But it's the same thing for you. You have piles and piles and piles of clothes and books and things that you never use, right? Yep. So the one toy in, one toy out it was a great principle for us. And to this day, like, for me, I want to say for me, it was probably a bigger challenge because, mm -hmm. you know, my wardrobe when you moved in was, was massive. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous, my wardrobe, okay? And so now I've adopted the one tie in, one tie out so much so that like, I love my shoes. But if I buy a new pair of shoes, it damn well means I'm giving a pair away. Yes. And, and you know, and there's not that I don't like those shoes anymore, but it's the commitment that I've made right. to the one toy in one toy out. And it just kind of, you're always paring down. That's it. You know, great comment by Danielle. Great idea for kids during holidays, Christmas. We always donated our old toys to homeless and less unfortunate or to get new toys. I, I mean, that's exactly yeah. what we did. I want to kind of finish this by saying also though, everyone's chiming in. Oh, I do this with my kids. Yeah. Kids, kids, kids. We're talking about us now. Mm -hmm. This whole one toy in, one toy out generated as an idea from our kids, like us teaching them. But we realized very quickly this had to be our own policy. Yeah. If I buy a new this, then I have to donate that. It has to be of equal value or use. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. For us, that's the key. I, I'm going to buy a new $2,000 computer and I shall get rid of this toothbrush. Like, no, that's not reasonable. <laughs> Equal value or use is kind of the law of the land. Yeah. Now, I want to say one more thing because so many of our viewers have chimed in on this particular topic, what I'm about to say, as something they want to learn more about. So if you'd like to learn more about what I'm about to say, please say so in the comments, okay? Because um, we can do an entire show on it. Do you know what this whole one toy in, one toy out thing has done for our kids? Not just us, our kids. They conditioned to become minimalists. Mm -hmm. Now they have just what they need and nothing more. They're not materialistic. They, they're not bombastic when you take things away, blah, blah, blah. They're, but you know what the real, the real joy for me is? It helped me segue away to teach them how to invest their money. Mm. Do you know that if you just invest your money at a young age, 
15, 14 years old, and you're conservative, simplistic, but consistent with allocating funds to that investment every single year, you are locked, banked, and mathematically guaranteed to have a seven-figure investment by the time you're 40. Yeah, absolutely. So that... Our kids don't receive money now and go apeshit buying stuff. Mm -hmm. They now, at the age of 14 and 12, they now come to us. Mm -hmm. Grandma gave them $100 for Christmas, and they say, okay, um, guys, um, I got to pay myself first, so um, here's uh, $75 I'm going to give to you guys. Could you please deposit that in my stock? Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to keep 25, but I'm going to spread it out over four weeks. So that gives me, you know, almost five and a half dollars a week to kind of spend. Is that cool? That's what they say to us now. Yeah. So if you'd like more information about investing with kids, etc., just let us know. But that's why I'm even more proud of this one toy in, one toy out for them. Absolutely. Is that it's, it's opened a new world of understanding for these kids. Yeah, absolutely. What they can gain in freedom mm-hmm. financially. I agree. Completely. You're digging this? People are looking forward to hearing about Are you all digging this so far? Yes. Lisa Arsenault, and, and she actually, I believe, messaged this to me the other day, but yeah. she has... Um, started packing up all their all of her, her books that she's had since childhood and she's going to donate them to shelters like good on you beautiful what a beautiful experience guys are we earning this so far today are you digging this i'll take some hearts give us some love, give us some love. <laughs> that was number one one toy in one toy out you ready for number two are you ready for number two i'm always ready <laughs> great what? are you ready for number two <laughs> Here's number two. Are you ready? It's easy. Create a 12 to 24 month plan. Yeah. It doesn't have to get more complex than that. But let me say this. Okay. You always overestimate what you can do in six weeks, Mm -hmm. but underestimate what you can accomplish in six months. Yeah. It's why people don't achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. It's why people set goals for weight loss, for making more money, for increasing their business revenues, for whatever. They set goals, they get excited, and just as quickly as they got excited, it fizzles out. And they stop. And that's why people don't achieve the goals they set. Mm -hmm. This whole crusade into decluttering and de-stuffing your life is no different. Spread this out before you start going crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deep six books. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to do my clothes. One toy in, one toy out. Make a plan. Make a 12, a year to two year plan. It doesn't have to be two years. A year is fine. Where this is the systematic order in which you will attack things. Yeah. It yeah. makes it easy. It makes it, makes it that you're not going to jumpstart with mad motivation, but then fizzle out two weeks later. Yeah, get over because what happens with that jumpstart, right, is you, you, you jumpstart for three hours on a Saturday, but then you look at it all and you're overwhelmed by it, so you yes, stop, right? exactly. And, and I want to say that, like, you know, if it wasn't for, a, you know, a 12 to 24-month plan, um, for us, you know, we would have never gotten to where we've gotten with this. Like, oh, because absolutely. seven years ago, we were selling a house that was two stories and four bedrooms and yeah. getting rid of 100 bags of stuff and, you know, de- decreasing down to, you know, one set of cutlery as opposed to five sets of cutlery. But, you know, if you had told us then, you know what, what we want you to do is Carrie and Brian, you are going to sell all your stuff, get rid of it all, go to one suitcase and only rent places that have furniture. We would have been like, are you shitting me? Overwhelmed. Like there's no, because at that point it's too hard to conceive of the whole thing, right? That's right. So having a plan that's laid out like that is essential to the execution of it. 100%. You guys, do you see the simplicity in that? Sometimes I think our stuff is more genius than anybody else's stuff on the planet because of how fucking simple it is. Exactly. It's not sexy. It's simple. Create a plan. I think Carrie said it perfectly. We now live in a big, beautiful, furnished home. We can move to a new home in 25 minutes because we each own a single suitcase. Six years ago, that would have been like, what the fuck do you mean? Yep. How do I not take my bed with me? What What about the antique this and the dresser of that and... The, you know, Connie said earlier she moved 500 books from Wisconsin to Colorado. We had the same thing. Yeah. So take your time. I, itemize your house. Yeah. Itemize your life. 
and start to create a plan of how you want to take it down month by month. Absolutely. Don't overwhelm yourself. You know, and we're always layering <coughs> on, and we're going to get to this. this. This is going to come up in one of the next points, but um, <coughs> we're always looking for, for room to improve, right? Always. And so you guys all know that we moved, you know, about a month and a half ago from our home in Montreal to our home up here. Yes. And we, you know, we came with four suitcases. We were just, we were at our accountant yesterday, and yep. we were, one of the things we said to our accountant yesterday was like, you know, in this move that we made, we had this Rubbermaid full of tax documents. Yeah. And we were like, okay, this dot, this Rubbermaid needs to go. It's the only thing that was like overwhelming, right? Yep. So we know we have a plan for it. We know exactly what we're going to do to get, take that stuff and make it so it's paperless so that we can sure. eliminate the next level, right? Yeah. It's always about the next level for us. I want to say good morning to uh, Luis and lovely Patterson got her journal today. Woohoo! Love that. You know what? Let me take what Carrie just said there and move on to number three. Who wants to hear number three? Je veux voir le numéro... Je veux écouter le numéro trois. I get so turned on when she does that. <laughs> Unless I speak Quebecois. Isn't that the sexiest fucking thing you've ever heard? Do you know when we first started our relationship and I lived in Chicago and she lived in Montreal, I used to call her at two o'clock in the morning and wake her up and be like, um, hi, could you please speak French to me for 30 seconds? And what a fucking sport she would. She'd be all kinds of tantric and pornographic in French for me. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying, but fuck. <laughs> what he doesn't know is it wasn't tantric and pornographic at all. I was like reciting something, like some book or something. <laughs> it probably was very I love pornographic. I Carrie speaks French. How do you not? <laughs> Cynthia Goldman, what kind of journal? Cynthia, where have you been? Cynthia Goldman? Ah. First of all, welcome to the show, yes. Cynthia. And, um... Well, it's the Brian and Carrie Let's Eliminate Your Limits, How to Finally Achieve the Goals You Set Journal. As a matter of fact, Cynthia and everyone else, we are going to be giving the website to that journal in about 10 minutes, so stick around. We're yeah. going to give you that website. You can go Absolutely. get yourself a journal, Cynthia. Um, Jessica's husband's from Chicago, and Billy wants to hear you uh, uh, do an entire show in French. But you wouldn't understand me, Who Billy. Who cares? It doesn't matter. That's the <laughs> fucking point. We would just sit there. <laughs> Am I wrong? Dear. Anyways, y'all want people from Quebec would understand. Yeah, but whatever. Okay, number three. Who wants to hear number three? I want to hear number, number three. Number three is be solution centric. It parlays off exactly what Carrie just said about tax documents. Okay, we said this on Tuesday's show, but for those of you who were not with us, and for those of you who were, and one reminder. Okay, Brian Carrie, what do I do with all my books? Mm. Brian Carrie, what do I do with my baby pictures? Those are the two number one questions we get all the time. But if you're asking yourself how do I get a, how do I get rid of this? How do I live without that? You're creating stress. What can I do is a better question. And when we start asking ourselves that question, we came to easy answers. Yeah. We're avid readers, nonstop. Two simple rules on books. We don't like Kindle. Just so you know, we like actual books. Okay. Books, yeah. So a couple of simple rules. You buy one book at a time and you read it. Mm -hmm. So you're not stockpiling 15 books, which is what we used to do. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, you make notes or highlights along the way while you're reading the book. Mm -hmm. And then you take, you extract the relevant notes you want to carry with you for life. And you type them into a cloud, Google Drive. Yeah. It's free. You can access it from your phone, from any computer in the world, even if the computer you have breaks. So we keep, we store all of our information on a cloud. That way it comes with us. And our favorite thing, recycle the books. So I love like donating to shelter. I love all that. But you know what we used to love to do? We still do. I finished reading a book. I think to myself, what client, what colleague, what friend, what family member would benefit from this book? Mm -hmm. So I write a little handwritten note. Hey, Billy, I think this book would be perfect for you. I highlighted certain passages on page 12, 17, 77, and 84 that I believe are going to change your business. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. From Brian. And I mail the book to Billy. Yeah. Do you, people, recycle your knowledge. Absolutely. Pay it forward. So that's one example with books. Yeah. We also did one on uh, baby pictures. Yeah. Can I do the bills one? Or do you want to do... Well, I, I, let me just do the baby okay, pictures. Okay, sure, Baby pictures, sure. guys. Scan them and save them to a drive. Yeah. To, to a cloud. Yeah. It's not the physical picture. Mm -hmm. It's the image. Yeah. You can save an image. Yeah. Okay? Tax documents. 
Yeah, I, I was actually, so tax documents, I'm going to do quickly tax documents, scan sure. them and save them to a cloud. But I wanted to actually go the route of bills. Um, so, you know, if you are a diligent budgeter, you track your budget, right? So, so we know all of our personal expenses and, and for our corporate expenses, we have to actually save those receipts, right? Yes. You got you to hang on to them. But, you know, how many of you can relate to the bag of receipts or the wallet that's overflowing with right? receipts and it's so big that you don't even bother tracking your budget anymore because you can't you don't want to go to that pile of receipts right so we we have a system for our personal budget whereby we enter all the information in you know at the end of every day right but the corporate one is really the one that was like because we had it we have to keep those receipts sure. so what do we do right we're lit you should see me because I'm hysterical so I'll go somewhere and I'll buy something and uh, for our, for our business and I will stand at the cash put the receipt on the table and snap a picture yeah. of it and directly there from my iPhone sure. I upload it to our cloud on Google Drive our accountant is patched into that Google Drive yep. so she can take everything and use it yeah our life is different We're, because of we are one hundred percent paperless. Yes. And by the way, we've checked with lawyers. It's a perfectly legal document. Yes. If the IRS or Revenue Canada wants to see your receipts, email mm -hmm. them a bunch of photographs. It is irrefutably a legal document. Yep. So I look at Kristen Mahone Johnson says, Oh, she disagrees with us. She likes tangible books and picks. Well then you missed the part, Kristen, where we said Take our five steps and make them yours. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to have pictures all over the house, have pictures. We don't. Yeah. We think that's dumb because we can't move in 25 minutes with a box of books and pictures. But you make these rules yours. You don't worry what we do with ours. Absolutely. Okay? And I really, I, I want to re... I want to reaffirm that because Kristen, I think you chimed in late to the show where you missed us talking about that. Sure. Where Brian was talking about how he has five t-shirts and how I don't have five t-shirts because I like having more variety in my clothes. Yeah. It really is about making this what makes sense for you. So maybe for you, you want pictures and books, but something else that's completely irrelevant to us Right. Is something that you can get rid of, Absolutely. right? So it, it has to be about your process. Absolutely. You know what? And that that segues perfectly into the fourth yeah. of our five steps. I want because Louisa just read a great comment. So in, in lieu of what Kristen said, in lieu of what Louisa just said, here's number four: establish your guidelines. Don't listen to our guidelines. Okay. One toy in, one toy out. Create a twelve to twenty four month plan. Be solution centric. The fourth one, which we'll get to in a second, is attachments aren't real. And the last one is establish your guidelines. All those steps, you create the rules you want for your life. Just listen to these words. Do not get hypnotized by your own bullshit. Mm. Okay? That's what we ran into. Oh, I can't possibly get rid of this because of that. I can't possibly donate this because of that. I can't possibly live without this because of that. Because is your bullshit. Mm -hmm. So challenge yourself. Yeah. Call your own bullshit. Mm -hmm. Can you really not live without 500 books? If your answer is, well, no, Brian, I can't. Well, then you just established your own guidelines. Right. Good for you. But what we suggest, okay, in concert with creating a 12 to 24 month plan, is establish your guidelines first. We made this mistake. Seven years ago, we're gonna be minimalists. Throw everything out. <laughs> Donate it all, okay? Until day one. Oh, I can't get rid of this. Oh, I can't get rid of that. Oh, I can't, I can't part with this, okay? When emotion walks into the equation, it creates a shield of bullshit around you, mm. okay? Establish your own guidelines first. If I haven't worn it in X, it goes. Yeah. If I haven't looked at it in X, it goes. Mm -hmm. If I forgot I had it, yeah. it goes. Those are the kinds of guidelines you want to establish before. You yeah. start deep six. Absolutely. You know, and I'm going to chime in on that. First of all, Kristen, we knew we know you weren't judging. Of us, course by not. The way. <laughs> just so you know, we don't get judged. Um, and I, I just want to chime in. So for me, I want to say for me, the guidelines for my clothing was actually a really important aspect yes. because like that is exactly where I would like, 
I would hold on to things because I, I don't know if it's I'm a visual artist or I just love fashion, but like clothing was the thing for me that was was a challenge. So my and what I did was I created this this guideline for my clothes that I stick to no matter what. And it's like if I yes. haven't worn it in six months, number one. Yep. If I don't put it on and feel great in it, because we all keep the shit that we put on and we're like, oh, they're a little bit tight now, but I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna feel good in these in like six thousand years from now. Guys do it right? also. So Guys I, do also. I get rid of those. And then the last one is um, if it's damaged. Yes. Because we all have the piece, the, the the pants or the shirt that's missing a button that I'll fix it this day, but we never do it. Of course. So that was my, uh, those are my three rules. Establish your guidelines before you walk in. That Cecily, I love the way you said that. Exactly. Establish a guide before you go in. That's the key. If you know your own boundaries, make them yours. Yep. You know, and, and like, you know, I said to Kristen before, I happen to think pictures and books are stupid. I think they're dumb. I think they are a waste of my time and energy. I don't think you have to think that. Right. That's my guideline. Right. I think it's dumb in the life that we live to be able to pack in 25 minutes, except for the books and pictures, which takes us an extra hour. Yeah. That's dumb for us. But you get to establish your own guidelines, and that's why it's an important tenet. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Know what you want and what you don't want. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to our last and most metaphysical of all the properties, of all the steps. Attachments aren't real. Yeah. They aren't. And we could go so deep. We could go so metaphysical, so spiritual, but the spiritualities of attachments, the freedom of non-attachment, we could go on, we could do a, an hour on that show mm -hmm. all by itself, but we're not going to. We're just going to remind you that what you think you're attached to, you're probably not attached to. You're much more attached to the fear of letting it go, of feeling vulnerable without it. And so on and so forth. But what we had to do to procure the lifestyle we have now, which is the one we want, mm -hmm. is we had to challenge ourselves. We had to actually challenge ourselves on attachments. For you, baby pictures was a big deal. Yeah. For me, books were a big deal. Yeah. Massive deal. I, there's energy in books. I read it. I highlighted it. What if I go back and want to reread a passage? Mm -hmm. It was a huge deal for us. Yeah. Clothes were big for both of us. Yeah. Both of us, because we're both athletes, mm -hmm. which means we're gaining weight and losing weight kind of on a secular path. It's right. very common for us to go up and down 30, 35 pounds in a given year. Yeah. And so clothes were like, well, but I'm going to fit into this again. Or, oh, I'm gonna... Right? Yeah. So we, we've all, we were there as well. Mm -hmm. We had to come to terms with the fact that attachments are man-made. Yeah. And that we have gained more freedom by not being attached to anything, including where we live. Mm -hmm. And I can't overstate this one enough. We rent this home. We've told you that. We only rent furnished homes. Mm -hmm. This home is beautiful. This home is luxurious. This home is awe-inspiring. Look at that view. Mm -hmm. This home is gorgeous. It's sublime. But we have no attachment to it. Because yep. one day while we're here, this house will sell. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be given three weeks to two months to say, go find somewhere else to live. Right. So we aren't attached to our clothes, our books, our baby pictures, our house, our shoes. I'm attached to my wife. I'm attached to my kids. I'm attached to me. Everything else is an accessory. I fit in a suitcase too to come with you. One hundred percent true. I want to. Uh, I want to chime in on a few things there. The first thing that I want. I'm going to come back to the attachment, but the first thing I want sure. to say was, is actually you. Said, you were talking about the clothing again. Sorry, one oh. second. I apologize, Kristen Mahone. And then there's another comment on it. it was great. I would be worried about losing everything digitally. Clouds. That's what we said already. Clouds. They exist forever. And the and, okay now. So I feel like I've been talking too much to Kristen. Like I feel badly. Like you oh, think I'm, everybody else. I'm jumping up and down on you, and I would never do that, right? But everyone listening, everyone listening. Okay. When we say attachments aren't real, that's what we mean. Mm. You don't realize your own bullshit until somebody calls you on it, or you call yourself on it. Right. Okay. So. I'd be afraid to lose things digitally. Well, clouds don't go away. Hard drives break. Mm -hmm. Computers break. Flash drives break. Clouds don't. Mm -hmm. But you know, you want to know what else? Water damage, fire damage, lost, stolen. Right. Physical pictures can also right. go away. Absolutely. So then what? Right. right? So that's the kind of attachments we're talking about. Right. These are the conversations we had about mm -hmm. books, about baby pictures, about clothing. Right. 
Yeah. So you have to have those conversations. Absolutely. So Angela, you just asked the question that is actually what I was going to address um, in so far as uh, the process on clothing. Because Angela asked, so what do you guys do when you you go fluctuate up and down in weight? Yeah. Right. And so I want to make the point, I'm, I, and I know I'm, I'm hinging on clothing right now, but I think that it's because a lot of people can relate to the clothing thing. I mean, how many of you have things in your closet that have tags on them still? Right. Like we accumulate stuff because they things look pretty or we're trying to fill voids or we think we need it. Right. One of the things that I have found is that, and I can't remember the statistic on it, the number of how much money everybody, people out on average spend per month on clothing, oh, but it was significant, right? So one of the things that we found, and this is for me personally, is whether or not I'm keeping the clothes or not, you want to know what I do every season anyways, I shop. Because I like yeah. having a new wardrobe. And right. I was doing that when I had an abundance of clothes. So now what happens is, is I, every spring and every fall, I get like this, like this itch yeah. that I, I want to have new things in my wardrobe. Absolutely. So what do I do when I, I do keep a few things from each, from each cycle. So I have jeans that fit me in my cut cycle and jeans that fit me in my growth cycle. But really, and honestly, at the end of every season, I go through my wardrobe and I get rid of the stuff that doesn't fit me anymore, that I don't want, that I want to refresh. Yeah. And I go out and I re-up I re my wardrobe. And it costs maybe a couple hundred bucks, 200 bucks. But 200 bucks twice a year versus two to $300 every month Absolutely. is somewhere around where the stat is. Sure. So that's what we do. And then my final point on attachments is one of the things that I had to learn about attachments because I had, you had an attachment to books, yes. but I had an attachment to way more things. E emotionally, yeah. I was attached to things. Sure. I'm visual, so I would, I would want them, right? Yeah. One of the things that I realized is there is not one thing, not one thing that I could think of right now that I have gotten rid of that I have legitimately thought of, wanted, or wished I hadn't gotten rid of since I did it. Not one thing. Yeah. That, see, so that's my point. You're afraid of the jump. You're yep. not afraid of the fall. Yep. That's the key. You were emotionally attached to a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But not one hour has gone by where you feel badly it's gone. My wedding dress, remember? Oh, yeah. The wedding dress <laughs> to my to my ex-husband that I had for 10 years. I'm yes. like, why am I keeping this? <laughs> I love uh, Terrace Watson. Thank you for take, uh, talking about this. Such an important topic. I started decluttering many things in my life about two years ago. And I feel so much better emotionally. It's true. It's an emotional, mental, spiritual cleanse more than people realize. Because... Materialism is attachment. Yeah. And you can consult Hinduism, Buddhism, Zenism, any spiritual sect that has been around for thousands upon thousands of years. One of the primary tenets they all warn about is attachments. Mm. And especially in North America, Western Europe, most of the first world uh, you know, nations of the world, we have so much more materialism and attachment than we think we have. Right. And it, Tara, your, your comment is so pronounced. We experienced massive spiritual, emotional, mental decluttering and freedom. Our freedom is not just that we can pack up our house in 25 minutes and go somewhere else. Although I think that's pretty fucking cool. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of freedom that is like internal. You don't realize how attached you are to things and how much that can clutter parts of your being that you don't even realize are there. So great comment and I love you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen. Kristen. <laughs> okay, Kristen. So I want to say something to what you just commented on. Okay. Uh, what your comment, well, the comment you just made. But I really, really need to preface because I do not want you to think that we're coming gotcha. down on you at all. Right, of course. Um, we but this is, we did this the other day with Michelle Chapman Smith when she, she brought up an opportunity for us to, to express something and I want to share it, okay? So Kristen, I'm not challenging you. I'm merely opening up your, your mind and everybody else who's listening. So Kristen said, I totally understand what you're saying. I get the attachment thing and all of that, but photographs and books are a source of happiness and good energy for me. So I don't want to let that go. It brings me joy. I know I would miss holding those pictures of my kids someday going through the atoms. So here's what I'm going to say to you. Number one, I think that we need to, to consider when our happiness and our joy is tied up into an object, right? Um, so I was there one day. I remember exactly what it felt like, but that's the first thing I want to say is if, if our happiness is tied into a physical object, like Kristen, what would happen if let's just say there was a fire and heaven forbid you lost all that stuff? Are you saying that your happiness would be compromised? That's number one. Number two, 
You say you feel like you would miss them some one day. That's another projected assumption yeah. of what you might think. So why am I telling you all that? Because I am not trying to sit here and say to you, get rid of your pictures and your books. Like that's the furthest thing we're saying. trying to do. But if you want to keep them, say, you know what? Damn it, I'm keeping these because I want these. That's beautiful. But there's so many people who hold themselves back because of building those kinds yeah. of stories attached to stuff and things and circumstances. I'm not going to talk to Kristen right now, even though I love her. Yeah, because I was really talking about and, here, and here's why. Yeah. Because I want to carry this into a lesson for everybody. Yeah. I don't want to talk about books. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about baby pictures. I want to remove... There, there, Kristen, there's an amazing emotionality going on in you right now. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, comment back here. Am I alone here, guys? <laughs> we call that your ego trying to fish other egos into your boat. And that's okay. Love, this is what we do for a living. This is how we help people. Okay? So... Let me say this. We're not talking about books or pictures. We're, we're providing a lesson. One in spirituality, one in happiness, one in human growth, etc. Okay? I know I would miss it if. Okay? That is called projecting forward. It doesn't really matter what spiritual text, neuroscientific text, philosophical text. This is of the ages we're talking about here. From 10,000 years ago, philosophical text to modern day neuroscientific research. If we are in the past or projecting the future, we're missing the now. I'm not making this up. I'm not doing it to prove a point that we should all throw our books out. My point is there is an attachment. When we stand where we are and say, I project that if this were to happen, this would be the negative outcome for me. Mm. That's called an attachment. So it doesn't matter what we're attaching to. It can be a book, a baby picture. It can be ice cream. It can be the reason that people who work with us on weight loss actually lose weight sustainably. Because weight loss has really got nothing to do with what you eat and how you train. It's got to do with how you're attached to food and parts of your past. We help you break that down. Attachment's gone. End of problem. Okay, so that's one. Number two, I'd lose happiness and joy. This object carries happiness and joy for me. The ultimate goal of happiness is to be happy for no reason. If we require an external stimulus of some kind to be happy, we're attached. And that's what we want to walk back in our lives. We want to limit how much we are attached to. Because attachments are foggy. They're challenging. They create an ego space from which we live. And from that ego space, freedom, internal freedom, is an absolute impossibility. Now, Kristen, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking about books. I'm not talking about pictures. This is a lesson that I'm hoping everybody picks up in some way or another. Are we sitting in an ivory tower? Do we not have any attachments in the world? No, that would be inaccurate. Mm -hmm. We both still have attachments, but we're aware of them. And we're, we work every day towards the freedom of complete detachment. But that's why for 10,000, 12,000 years, mankind have been warning us against the evils of attachments, be it nationalistic, materialistic, any kind of istic. Freedom can't be had, felt, or enjoyed in the presence of attachments because it provokes ego. When we live in ego, we're not free. So I hope for all of us, that's not just a Christian at all, that's for everybody. Hell, that was for me to hear. I hope you guys like that. I hope it brought some understanding. Mic drop. That's all I gotta say there. Um, <laughs> I am gonna just, if the team is so, the crew is amazing. Right? Our crew's the best. I also wanna say um, to Maureen, because Maureen asked if we keep our journals, and you know, that was the heart, one of the hardest, most recent things. Yes. We don't keep our journals anymore. We don't, and um, that was challenging for and us. And I have a, I have, um, you know, I have a process. Like before I, I get rid of a journal, I, I sit down with it for maybe 10 minutes. And I flip through it and I reflect and I, I look at where I was and where I'm going and, and I, I literally say goodbye to it. I, sure. I like, it sounds like, maybe it sounds like hokey pokey to some people, but I literally is like, I, it's like I'm saying goodbye to that part of my growth, but not because 
you know, it was bad or anything like that, but because I'm always about creating new, right? So yes. we don't keep our journals. You know what uh, I also do as well, I might add, with my journal is I, I reference it. I look at it several times before it's time to say goodbye to it because it's full. And I take photographs of certain pages that have deep memories for me. Memories of a challenging time, a challenging day, an elated day, an aha moment. I yep. take photographs and I store them to a cloud. Yep. I access them whenever I want. Yeah. Absolutely. Guys, you guys have been awesome today. Absolutely amazing. Awesome. We have a... I was just going to, I was just going to like potentially like throw something. I was going to say, we have a great show tomorrow. We do. I, I have, <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to let it be. So yes, we do have a great show tomorrow. Yes. We're going to be live from our bedroom. From our big bedroom, our big closet, and we're going to watch Carrie Campbell pack her one suitcase. And we might have some surprises in store. Oh, we got some surprises. For Fucked Up Friday. We so always we have surprises. Be here tomorrow, because we have some surprises on Fucked Up Friday. Did we, um... Brian's attached to the cloud. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it's actually funny that, that you said that, because that's, that's, first of all, funny as fuck. <laughs> right? Well Sorry. played. But, Kristen, I was going to say it, then I wasn't, so now I am. Okay? Does anyone feel the way I feel? That's what you said before. Uh, where is it? There's another one. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I just wonder if anyone else holds photographs dear as I do. Brian's attached to a, to a cloud. Kristen, here's my only question. It is not, an, it's just like a legit question. Do you feel, hear, or sense yourself an ego right now? Mm. But that's not like an indicting question. It's not like a, hey, bitch, you're an ego. I'm actually curious if you sense something. Yeah. Can I, um, Which also, by the way, is a broader lesson to everyone. Absolutely. Right? Oh, we could go on, but I won't go on. <laughs> we could. And fuck the party. It is a fuck party, the party time. tomorrow. Party time. That's right. This, there's still so many people here. I don't, I want to, I don't want to go. Let's just throw our hair what out. What else you want to talk about? <laughs> you guys want to talk about anything else before we head out? <coughs> Seriously. Woo. Best crew in the world. Um, let me say this, guys. Think about this for a second, okay? Count your wins. Review your direction. Imagine your outcome. Learn your language, okay? So, look how this has illustrated itself over the course of just this show. And I'm right now I'm taking minimalism and I'm equating it to a goal you might have. Right. Okay? I can't imagine myself without this. Mm. Imagine your outcome. So imagine it purposefully differently. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys are picking up what I'm laying down right now. I can't do this because of that. I would lose happiness because of this. Yeah, but imagine the outcome differently. Number one. Number two, learn your language. How attached are you to things? Start to understand that language. Become okay with it. Be aware of it and see if it's worthy of change. Review your direction. Create a 12 to 24 month plan and review it every week to keep yourself on task. Count your wins. Because sometimes the process of minimalizing takes some time. Mm. And if you get caught in the cesspool of it taking forever and now I'm getting overwhelmed and I'm a little frazzled versus every day you count the win you had that day. Guess what happens? You close your eyes, you wake up and you're a minimalist. And you have way more freedom and way more time and way more money than you thought you were going to have. Doesn't that sound a lot like goal setting? Yeah, it does. That's why I'm in love with our stuff because it applies across the board. I don't care if you want to become a minimalist, lose weight, build a better business, make more money. I don't care what the goal is. The stuff applies. So to Cynthia, who asked a while ago, to everybody, guys, achieve the goals you set dot com. Go there now. Between now and Monday, if you pick up that entire Let's Eliminate Your Limits program. You get us coaching you for four weeks for no extra charge. Yeah. Achieve the goals you set dot com. Look at those four exercises. That's the entire program. Minimalism, weight loss, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right? Achieve the goals you set dot com. It's exciting. Woo! I can't wait for the group of Did people. Did we get a we share? Have. We got all kinds of shares. Right on. Whew. That show was so involved, I'm hungry. <laughs> Is that weird? I feel like I need to eat now. Oh. oh gosh, what a great show. We're looking forward to tomorrow. Absolutely. You guys are the best. We have the best crew crew ever. Now Billy's a plank. I don't know what that means. He's a plank? Oh, maybe he's planking. Oh, he's planking. He was on the, on the treadmill, treadmill and now he's planking. I got it. Awesome. Well, we'll see the best. We'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow from our bedroom. Fucked up Friday. See you then. Mwah. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha. Yes!